Stalker Shadow of Chernobyl is considered to be one of the best uh, shooter games available by a lot of PC elitists, and um, it's a personal favourite of one of mine. Uh, the Stalker series, this was the first game. Shadow of Chernobyl was released in 2007, and it's about a character exploring the exclusion zone around the Chernobyl nuclear power plant in the Ukraine. And um, the game's basically an open world game where you explore, and it's sort of an RPG of such, but without skills, if that makes sense, where equipment can be upgraded and leveled up but the actual player character themselves can't be uh, except for using artifacts which I'll come into later so it's mostly a game about exploring and what's great about Stalker is that the AI does everything regardless of what the player is doing except for on a couple of missions but basically the AI will explore, the AI will kill each other and the player kind of doesn't feel like you're the primary person in the game, which is what makes it so enjoyable. In a sense, the game world feels like it goes on, regardless if you live or die, or dependent on your actions. Now, there's two parts to the AI. There are the mutants, uh, which come in various shapes and sizes, and they basically prowl around in packs, uh, or singly, depending on what kind of mutant they are. And the mutants, the mutants range from not being very dangerous at all, as long as you're paying attention, to being incredibly dangerous. And then you have sort of humanoid enemies, which are things like bandits, the military, other stalkers. And basically, they're all in the zone for different reasons. Now, in the stalker series, you play as a stalker, which is basically a person who's gone into the zone to find artifacts and sell them. Now artifacts are these uh, weird items that have been created by the radiation and some other things in the zone which I won't go into and spoil the storyline wise but artifacts are essentially these uh, little items that break a lot of the laws of physics as known in the real world and the RPG aspect of the game comes in when you find artifacts you can equip them and they will affect different things like your blood loss rate the rate your body heals, the rate you regen uh, stamina and things like that. So artifacts are the only real RPG aspect of the game as well as being able to find some guns of upgraded stats. And um, there's good fun progression in the game when you find new guns and you know try them out as well as finding better armor and better artifacts. And uh, the plot focuses around your character who's just only known as marked one and they wake up after having amnesia and they know that they've been told they have to kill Strelok and the game's about finding out who that is and then it, the story develops from there but I won't spoil it in this video now the story is almost a secondary part of the Stalker games it's not all that brilliant but the reason people like the games is because you can explore and um, interact with an incredibly detailed world now the graphics are beautiful in all of these games, um, the first game Shadow of Chernobyl which I'm reviewing now is the least pretty of the games but it still looks very good even by today's standards and with graphics mods available you can make the game look very very good. Now Stalk is a game where out of the box it's incredibly glitchy, even with the official patches there's still lots of unfinished bugs. But with um, mods, then there are dozens of good mods for the Stalker games. You can um, get an experience that's basically the original game but greatly improved, or ones that are completely different experiences altogether. And I've replayed the game three or four times using different sort of mods that change the game quite a lot. Now, I think the Stalker series is definitely in my top ten games I've ever played. Whether or not I think Shadow of Chernobyl is the best game, I still haven't decided yet. It's generally the fan favourite of the series being the first game. But there was a sequel, Clear Sky, and there's also uh, the final sequel, which is Call of Pripyat. And the gameplay changes a bit in each of them. Call of Pripyat is the most far removed from the original, and that's why some people like it more than the original. Clear Sky is generally disliked by a lot of the fans, although I find that quite harsh, because in certain aspects, Clear Sky is better than Shadow of Chernobyl but um, Shadow of Chernobyl is obviously original and Clear Sky feels like a bit of a rehash of that game but I'll review those games separately but overall Shadow of Chernobyl is an exceptionally good game it's definitely worth playing
you can waste countless hours just exploring and sort of taking part in the world and I really can't recommend it enough the Shadow of Chernobyl is definitely one of the best games I've ever played but you just need some patience to get it working properly as out of the box as stated it doesn't work that well so graphically it's good sound design is very good some of the gunshots sound a bit wimpy but the mutant growls and everything are fantastic and it's just a phenomenal game I can't stress that enough um, yep I definitely recommend getting it you can get it very cheaply on Steam or you can normally find retail copies of it sort of for a cute few quid on eBay and yeah exceptional game make sure you get it and you can try patching it up and playing it as it is or just get some of the mods for your first time that don't really change the gameplay but just fix all the mistakes in it but overall fantastic series fantastic game and it's definitely worth getting